بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں السلام علیکم پاکستان گڈ ٹو بی بیک اینڈ وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ ون آف دا موسٹ امپارٹنٹ ایریاز اینڈ دیٹ از دا رول آف گورنمنٹ ان کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ ہاؤ اٹ انٹر فیسز ود دی اکانمی اینڈ واٹ آر دی ویریس امپلیکیشنز اینڈ کمپلیکیشنز اینڈ دا ریزلٹس وچ ایمرج فرام آل آف دیز ڈفرنٹ انٹروینشنز ناؤ لیڈیز اینڈ جنٹمین وین وی آر بیسکلی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا گورنمنٹ دین پبلک گورننس اٹ سیلف بیکمز ویری امپارٹنٹ ناؤ وین وی ٹاک اباؤٹ پبلک گورننس Uh, there are various dimensions, various schools of thought uh, and various uh, contextures and textures uh, related to public governance. When we talk about public governance, then we see that in public governance, there is this uh, immense uh, potential uh, which we talk about good governance in the public sector. So we have uh, the UN, UNDP, uh, different pillars uh, of public governance and of uh, good governance uh, within the public sector. And all of these tend to exist so that they can facilitate and promote the private sector and also the social sector integrating all three in such a way that their economy tends to grow and the people uh, are also uh, given equity opportunities and different possibilities now when we look at all of this then governance is the exercise of authority which involves the right to direct the right to lead right to control within an organization so again it is direct lead and control these are the three main areas Uh, which are a part uh, of any governance mechanism or system or school and in all of this what we see is is that the government has to proactively engage itself and ensure that it can assert its 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 uh, control uh, its lead its implementation and its direction because without that then there would be chaos which we have seen uh, in many banana republics in uh, south uh, uh, in south america and also many countries uh, in um, uh, in africa and in also certain Uh, areas and regions uh, of Asia. We have been seeing all of this taking place whereby there was a convolution which basically emerged between direct lead and control of the governance structure existing in a particular country. Now, two problems exist with organizations operating within civil society. Number one, the way of accumulating power and authority and number two, the way to control and limit the power and authority. So, there's this paradox which is taking place uh, between both that on one hand we want to have Uh, power wealth and authority but on the other hand we don't want it to uh, reach such a level whereby it becomes dictatorial and uh, what we in our own common language call pharaonic and uh, therefore there has to be uh, this balance so it's just like uh, my freedom ends where your freedom begins so it's basically power and authority ends where control and limit of power and authority basically begins and therefore this this invisible line is very important to be determined Uh, by the different stakeholders so that there is not a major tilt towards uh, any one particular direction which can have a very adverse effect on governance and the economy as a whole. Good governance is supposed to exist if the following three objectives are achieved. Number one, uh, equality of law and its effective implementation. So what we usually say is, is rule of law, OF. But unfortunately in Pakistan we have rule of the law, OFF. So is a great need to make it equitable, to make it equal, implementable, for everyone then opportunity for every individual to realize his full human potential so the government has to create the facilitating platforms the conducive environment whereby individual pro- potential can emerge and contribute collectively and the third is effective productivity and no waste in any sector now this is a very big uh, very big uh, pitfall for the government in pakistan because we see that there are immense waste water is wasted uh, electricity is wasted uh, resources are wasted minerals are wasted Uh, time is wasted. So many resources are wasted and therefore uh, the government has to uh, create an environment whereby there is effective productivity and the waste of any particular item or in any particular sector has to be minimized to the maximum. So what we see is that in public governance again, uh, it becomes the responsibility of the government that with power and authority comes its responsibility and again to ensure that whatever policy, strategy, Uh, or uh, any rules or regulations or laws that are formulated, it's extremely important that they should be uh, implemented across the board without any discrimination, uh, without any humiliation, and most importantly, uh, that every human being is equal, whereby everyone has uh, certain rights which have to be uh, implemented in total and not partially. And that is extremely important. That could lead to a better conducive environment so that organizations can perform in a much better way. Thank you so much.